I want to welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Edward Kondrat, and uh, we try to keep things informal here, so I don't mind you asking questions. And I usually look at uh, treating patients as a partnership. You know, I'm not this doctor that knows everything, although sometimes I like to think, sometimes I think I know everything, but I always find out that I don't. And I kind of wear two hats. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist did lots of cataract surgery, laser surgery in my day. And then when I discovered homeopathy, I said, my goodness, uh, this works. And why don't they teach you this in medical school? And uh, so that kind of changed the way I approach eye disease. What's homeopathy? I'll talk a little bit. We'll go, we'll go into homeopathy. But homeopathy is um, a different way of looking at disease. And you'll kind of get a feel for that as I talk about, uh, you know, my, my approach to treating disease. So what I want to focus on is we have um, a program here that tries to look not only at your eye disease, but maybe some of the underlying causes that contributed to the disease. Typically, the medical profession, they have specialties. You know, you come in with an eye problem or a stomach problem, and all they do is address that. You know, you take a pill, and uh, it may help a little bit, and then something else may come up, a side effect. And pretty soon, 10, 20 years go by, you have a shopping bag full of medicines, and you're getting sicker and sicker and side effects. So my approach uh, is to start from the foundation. And I think the foundation to gaining your health and your eyesight back is your diet. You know, food, they say food is your best medicine, and it really, it's really so. And if you're putting a lot of garbage into your body, then there's very little hope for any treatment, for that matter, to work effectively. You may have a short-term benefit, but the long-term is going to be really difficult to get your health back. Now, um, we have, I think we have a major health crisis right now with our diet. Um, I don't, in fact, I don't even know where to begin with the diet. I think the biggest issue with our diet is genetically modified food. And if you really investigate this, it is very scary, very scary. Um, Monsanto um, developed a business model that they wanted to control the world population, they wanted to control all the seeds and the food of the world. And they began to genetically modify seeds and organisms. And uh, for some reason, this was pushed through Congress legislation, and it is now, you know, FDA approved, so to speak, when in fact all the Euro European companies rejected uh, this whole idea of genetically modified food. Just to give you one example, uh, Monsanto observed that Roundup spray. How many here have heard of Roundup spray? It's Home Depot, you, every time you turn around you see it. They saw some bacteria uh, growing in a Roundup spray dump. And they said, well, maybe if we splice this bacteria with a potato, for example, then that potato will become immune to Roundup spray. So when the farmers spray the, the fields, Everything will die except the potatoes. So they did. They spliced it with the potato, and then that potato was resistant to Roundup spray. So there was a scientist in England who investigated this product, and this was published in the Lancet Journal, which is a prestigious uh, British journal. And he had three groups of rats. One group was fed the genetically modified potato, the second group was fed regular potatoes with the bacteria that was secreting this substance that made it resistant to Roundup spray. And the third group was fed just regular potatoes. There was only one group that the rats developed stomach cancer, uh, their offspring had birth defects, uh, lesions, failure to thrive, etc. And the group was the genetically modified potato. They did better being fed the potato with the bacteria that was, was producing this Roundup resistant secretion. Isn't that scary? They also did a study 
where they had people ingest GMO food. And it is actually assimilated into your intestinal bacteria. So people that are eating GMO food now have bacteria in their intestinal tract which are producing Roundup resistance chemicals. Now you may say, well, it really doesn't affect me because I'm careful what I eat. I look at labels when I shop. Well, 90% of all our corn is genetically modified. The number one sweetener in the United States right now is high corn fructose syrup. 80% of all of the soybeans are genetically modified. And I saw a documentary that the Canadian farmers are extremely upset because the organic farmers have observed that the Roundup Ready canola and soybeans, the seeds are being blown over to their field. They're now um, cross-pollinating. And the danger is that we are not going to have any pu pure lineage of food. It's all going to be genetically modified. And that's, I think, one of the contributing factors of a lot of chronic disease. So number one, you have to be vigilant. We have here our 70-30 diet. 70% 70 of what you eat should be organic living food. And I never want to hear, we're in a recession, I never want to hear anybody say, I can't afford organic, it's too expensive. <laughs> you can't afford not to buy it. And there's another reason why. Monsanto in their wisdom, and my good friend calls him Monsatan. <laughs> not Monsanto, Monsatan. In their good wisdom, they told farmers, you don't have to rotate crop style. We'll give you fertilizer. You know, before, I grew up on a Pennsylvania farm, and on the farm we rotated crops. We grew alfalfa, legumes, and then corn to replenish the soil. So Monsanto was supplying them fertilizers, and the Roundup Ready, corn, etc. And what's happening is our soil is becoming deplete of essential minerals. It's affecting everybody, everybody in this room. And we're going to do a little, we're going to have a little fun. Miss Lynn's going to have a zinc test. I have found that 80% of patients that I see, maybe even greater percentage, even though they're taking zinc as a supplement, are deficient in zinc. And zinc deficiency is the number one cause for macular degeneration. Three things happen to a man when they're zinc deficient. They lose their sight, they get prostate problems, and they become hard of hearing. What? What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> and the woman, the same thing. They don't have a prostate, but maybe they have some type of female problem. I don't know about it, but they also become hard of hearing. And you lose your taste. So we're going to have a fun here. And if you have adequate zinc levels, the zinc should take, taste horrible. So I was talking about, just one second, I was talking about the organic foods. In, 19, in the early 40s, the government did a study. They analyzed different food groups for mineral contents. They looked at spinach. The average serving of spinach in the early 40s had about 157 milligrams of iron. Guess what the average serving of spinach now has? About 5 to 10, yeah, iron, 5 to 10. So the, our food looks good, but it's nutritionally deficient. So uh, my friend Robert Rowan makes the comment, if God doesn't grow it, don't eat it. And I, I like to tell patients, if it has a label, don't eat it. So when you go shopping, start looking at labels. And you have to be really tricky and clever. Because the other day I went over to Fry's and got myself big labels, organic fruit juice, all natural. I thought I was pretty clever. I got home and started looking at the label, fortified with corn fructose. I, was, I, got a, I bought a jar of genetically modified fruit juice.